Hi, this is Darren Lyle. I've done a bit of point pulling since the last video and I've got him so he's beginning to look like at least what I think should be the character. What I did is I did a lot of point pulling in the Y axis, forward and back, and also kept an eye on what it looked like with the subdivision surface modifier turned off. So if I just come over here and click the eyeball here on the subdivision surface panel, you can see it what it looks like with that smoothing turned off. And it looks kind of jagged, but it's still relatively proportional. You need to be careful, I think, because sometimes when the points can be pulled way out, but then when you smooth it, it looks okay. I think you need to be careful sometimes about how far away the actual vertex is away from the point on the smoothed surface. You can see here that the move manipulator is a bit out from this point and that means that the actual place of the vertex is here. So if we turn off the subdivision surface modifier you can see it pops out to there. So as you're pulling points around if you're in smooth mode here or have a subdivision surface modifier turned on you need to be sure and try and keep your manipulators relatively close to where the visible vertices are. Um, they can get way out of whack, so just be careful with that as you begin pulling points around. All right, so the next part of the process here I like to do is kind of up along the forehead and up over the head and down the back of the head. So what I'll do is select um, these points here. So maybe I'll select this point and control click this point and that will select the edge all the way between those two. So I'll go back to my character view here, my screen layout, and I'll begin extruding up and trying to keep these in line with the reference image. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is turn off the subdivision surface modifier as I do this. You can do it here if I hit E and then you can see you can do it um, but I think it kind of stretches and can mislead you sometimes if you're extruding while the subdivision surface modifier is on. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off for now. I'll of course turn it back on just to check things as we go but I'm going to hit E and I'm going to then pull out and forward some like this just a little bit. Now I need to take these points individually and begin kind of rearranging them so they fit and make sense in the edge flow of the character here. Uh, I think I'm going to move this one up like this and maybe move it out a bit. So I want to begin having these points spread out some as well as begin to flatten a bit so they're all more horizontally aligned, I guess. So I'm just going to begin pulling these apart like so and getting them a little more aligned. And that looks pretty good. I think what I'll do is select this vertex and then control click this one and that'll select that edge. And it looks to me like I've gone too far here. I'm going to come down again just a little bit. So I can't quite get up that far yet. Now let's try this again. I'm going to select this edge and extrude and pull it up. And now I need to try and align these again. Um, I'm going to need to do this point by point, I think. So I'll just grab a point and pull it down into place and begin to spread these out just a bit like this. Now if I tumble around here and hit the Z key you can see what I'm beginning to get. It's awfully pointy here. Uh, I think I'm going to move some of these forward a bit so we don't have so much of a of a sharp point there. All right, so I'll go back to my side view with the three key, hit the Z key to go back to wireframe, and let's keep going. So I'll select that point, control click that point, 
And let's move on up the forehead here. So hit E and ex to extrude and up and maybe along here. And now these are going to have to be arranged again because these points just aren't fitting on this pointy little head now. So I'll begin aligning these a little bit better. And let's tumble around and see how we're doing here again. I'm going to take a look at this part of the forehead and just try and make it a little bit more of a curve again. So it isn't quite so sharp. And we can go ahead and turn on the subdivision surface modifier over here and just to see how we're doing. All right, that's not too bad. I feel like I do need to bring these out more. Like that front of the forehead is just a little bit too pointed. So I'm going to bring these out some. Round that off a little bit. And I'll do the same thing with these. I'll just begin pushing these out just a little bit to get more of a curve along the forehead. And maybe even bring these out some and push them down a bit so we get more of a smoother curve. We're going to have to rearrange this um, area around the eye once we get an eyeball in there. All right, I'm going to turn off the subdivision surface modifier again, go back to the side view, perspective, and wireframe, tab back into vertex mode, and let's see what else we can do here. So once again, I'll select that, control click that point to get that edge. And now let's try it again. I'll hit E and extrude. And this time I'll bring it right up here. And now we're going to need to rotate it some. It's going to need to turn a bit. So I'm going to hit the R key like this and begin to turn that so it has a little bit more of a, a dome on top. And now I'm going to have to do some serious point pulling to get this um, aligned properly. So, <laughs> we don't need this quite so high here. Maybe down to there. And this could come up now. So, now that I've done this, I need to do a little bit more arranging here. There's never a time when you can just say, oh, well, that's done. <laughs> and then you can move on. Once you move on, you oftentimes have to go back and, and adjust things. All right, so I'm just pulling points. And what I want to do is get this lined up so it's kind of curved on the top of the head here. All right, so we've got it lined up here in the front view as well as I think pretty good in the side view. We'll know more as we go. But I'll go ahead and continue now and select this edge and hit E and extrude. And then I'm going to rotate it yet again so it's kind of more like that. And now I'm going to have to do some point pulling again. We could, if we wanted to, try and scale this in the Z axis. So I could hit S and Z and kind of scale it so it flattens it a bit. Helps a little. And then bring that over here. So now we could begin selecting individual points and once again getting them aligned. So I'm going to tumble around again and hit the Z key, see how we're doing. I'll turn on the subdivision surface modifier and just see how we're doing. It's not too bad. I feel like though that once again this part is a little too pointy. Um, this happens and you just have to kind of come back in and try and get that nice curve to the head. Well, let's do one or two more here. I'll go back to my character view. Let's select this edge again right here. And I'll turn subdivision surface off for a minute. Hit E and extrude and move it back. Oh, and maybe like that and maybe rotate it a hair and bring it down. So once again, let me try and scale in the Z to flatten it a bit. And then we're going to need to do some point pulling again. So I'll just drag this down and just 
try and adjust these points once again. I think I will also try and flatten it here in the Y as well. So I'll press S and Y and then scale. Just try and flatten that up just a bit. So maybe this is the point at which these edges kind of turn and go down now along the back of the head. We're getting there. I think we've got some point pulling to do up here. I can see these kind of points happening. I don't think I want that. I think these can come out a little more. That should help. Um, also, it looks like this is turning in a little too much. We may need to begin pulling these out a little bit more like that. Uh, but generally speaking, I think we're doing okay. Um, in the next video, we'll continue on down the back of the head here. And then we'll think about connecting up the front part of the head here, the face, and fill in to the back part of the head. So we'll begin working on that in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you then. If you'd like to learn more about Blender, then join me for my Blender Scene Creation course. In it, we'll create this animated scene of a mech descending into an underground tomb. As we go, you'll be introduced to Blender's modeling tool set as we build the mech character and the environment. We'll talk about manipulating objects, the difference between object mode and edit mode. And as we begin modeling the mech, we'll discuss more advanced topics, like cutting one 3D object with another using booleans. We'll talk about object origins and parenting, creating geometry with the bridge tool, and creating tubes or pipes with Bezier curves. We'll create the elements of the environment, the pillars, the walls, and we'll add more detailed scene elements along the way. Once the modeling is complete, we'll talk about UV mapping, what it is, why it's needed, and how Blender's UV mapping toolset can help you UV map your 3D objects quickly and efficiently. We'll take a look at Blender's Cycles render engine as we add the materials for the mech and the environment. We'll use the free open source image editing program, GIMP, to prepare and edit our textures and apply them to the 3D models in the environment and on the mech. Ultimately, we'll want our character to move, so we'll go over preparing the character for rigging, creating the armature, and how to set up an advanced foot roll rig. We'll create custom shapes and make sure all our controls are parented and organized, ready for animating. We'll begin animating our character flying into the scene and dropping to the ground. We'll use Blender's graph editor and dope sheet to adjust the timing, and we'll talk about keyframing and tangents as well. Once our scene is complete and we've animated the character, we'll do some final tweaks to the lighting, as well as have some fun creating a jet flame effect for our mech's jetpack. And in the end, we'll render out the animation and export a movie file. Bringing an animated scene to life is an amazing process. And once you know how to do it, you can bring any of your ideas to life. So join me for Blender Scene Creation. Learn more at DarrenLyle.com.